The NBA has one of the longest and deepest running coaching trees in all of sports. You can connect nearly every major NBA head coach to just a few coaching trees and a coaching tree older than the NBA itself. What if I told you that there was a direct connection between the man who coaches the Greek freak and the guy who created the sport of basketball in 1891. There have been 346 head coaches in NBA history, with the majority of these head coaches stemming from less than 10 major coaching trees. Now, real quick, down below, I'm going to attach the coaching tree I made. This coaching tree includes over 120 NBA coaches, all 30 active NBA coaches, the top 25 coaches of all time, as well as the creator of basketball himself. Now, this couldn't be made in a 2D shape, of course, so there are a few imperfections, but just about every relevant head coach and just about every head coach that you know of is somehow included on this tree. And mind you, one other thing is I'm not actually counting player connections unless I mention it. So guys like Steve Kerr, who played for Greg Popovich, I'm not actually going to count in the Greg Popovich tree because as you find out, the Popovich tree is absolutely massive. But anyways, let's get all that out of the way and let's connect the dots on the biggest puzzle in NBA history. Let's start from the very top with the founder of basketball, Dr. James Naismith. For those of you who don't know, James Naismith is widely credited with the creation of basketball all the way back in December of 1891. But this version of basketball is very different from the game we know today, involving up to nine players, a soccer ball, peach baskets, dribbling wasn't around, and we're half a century away from the actual NBA. But the game picked up fast, spreading to local YMCAs and colleges around the country. And in 1898, Dr. Naismith became the head coach for the University of Kansas's basketball team. In his eight years there, he would amass a record of 55 and 60, making him the only coach in Kansas history to actually have a losing record. Yeah, the founder of basketball himself has a losing record as a head coach. In 1907, Naismith would then go on to other activities, citing that you can't coach basketball, but only play it. To take up Naismith's position was his former player named Forrest Fogg Allen. Fogg Allen would go on to coach for nearly 50 years, many of them at Kansas. He would become one of the greatest college coaches of all time, and today Fog Allen is known as the father of modern basketball coaching. And during his time coaching, one of Fog Allen's many players would go on to become another legendary coach in Dean Smith. For those of you who know him, Dean Smith is a Coach of the Year winner as well as a two-time NCAA champion, most notable for coaching Hall of Famers James Worthy and a little prospect known as Michael Jordan. So yes, James Naismith coached the guy who coached the guy who coached Michael Michael Jordan, but there is a lot and a lot and a lot more. So let's keep it going. At the University of North Carolina, Dean Smith coached one more notable player, the man who just may have the largest coaching tree in basketball history and someone that I would call one of the grandfathers of all of coaching, Larry Brown. Larry Brown coached in the NBA for 35 years, as well as a few years in the ABA. But it's not just his 2004 championship that effectively ended the Kobe and Shaq Lakers. It's not just his Coach of the Year award, nor is it his Chuck Daly Lifetime Achievement Award. But Larry Brown may just have the most connections of any coach in NBA history. In all of his years of NBA and NCAA coaching, some of Larry Brown's assistant coaches include Steven Silas, Greg Popovich, Herb Williams, Alvin Gentry, Bill Blair, Mike Woodson, Mike Schuler, Doug Moe, the legendary John Calipari, yes, that John Calipari, and Maurice Cheeks. Many of these coaches have their own successful coaching trees, and we'll talk about them a little bit later. But before we go down the Larry Brown tree, we also have to talk about some of the few other branches in the ultimate NBA coaching tree. Let's start off with one of the greatest centers in NBA history, one of the most winningest players of all time, the first black coach in NBA history, and one of the most successful player coaches the league has ever seen, Bill Russell. Now, people think a lot of things about Bill Russell, but coaching and his coaching tree really isn't one of them. But let's go one level above Bill Russell and the man who coached him. That would be the legendary Red Arbach. Arbach was a longtime coach during much of the dominant Boston Celtics 60s dynasty. Now we can go up a level above Red Arbach, above the legendary Celtic and the guy who coached Red Arbach. That would be Jerry Gerard, 
all the way back at Duke in the 1940s. But from here, I actually could not find any more information about Gerard nor the man who coached him. Turns out there really is not a lot of information about basketball in the 1940s at Duke University. Who would have thought? But let's get back to Bill Russell. As a player coach, Bill Russell coached two notable coaches. First is Casey Jones, but the second would go on to become one of the most influential men in basketball history and the second grandfather of NBA coaching, Don Nelson. Casey Jones may be remembered more as a player, but I do have to note that he has also worked under one other great Hall of Famer, Bill Fitch. But anyways, let's get back to Nelson. After a successful playing career, Nelson would go on to coach in the NBA for 34 years and until being passed by Greg Popovich, was the winningest coach in NBA history amassing 1,335 career wins. Like Larry Brown, Don Nelson too has amassed a large and famous coaching tree. Throughout his career, Nelson has coached Rick Carlisle, Steven Silas, Avery Johnson, Del Harris, Casey Jones, Mike Schuler, Gary St. Jean, Dave Wool, Jeff Van Gundy, and Greg Popovich. Nelson has also had the pleasure of working under one more famous coach in Larry Costello. Now, Costello's tenure career may not be the longest nor the winningest careers in NBA history, but in his 10 years, Costello would coach both Don Nelson and another legendary coach in Hubie Brown. So anyways, we have Larry Costello, Don Nelson, and Larry Brown. Let's break down these coaching trees even further. Starting off with Costello, whose most notable assistant was, as I said, Hubie Brown. Brown's coaching tree includes Stan Albach, Mike Fratello, Bob Hill, and Rick Pitino. And would you look at that, Rick Pitino has quite the head coaching tree himself. All the way back at the University of Kentucky, one of his assistants is current Bulls head coach, Billy Donovan. And current Thunder coach, Mike Daigleneau, was the assistant to Donovan for a season. But anyways, back to Patino, he has also worked with Jim O'Brien and one of his assistant coaches was a 2020 NBA champion, Frank Vogel. And Frank Vogel has even had two successful assistant coaches, that being Jason Kidd, who is the head coach for the Mavericks, and the Hawks head coach, Nate McMillan. Another coach to work with Patino includes Stu Jackson. Now, Stu Jackson may not have the longest head coaching career, but he does have one major assistant coach in his resume. That would be Jeff Van Gundy. So in the Costello tree, which is really just the Rick Patino tree. That includes Billy Donovan, Mike Daigleneau, Jim O'Brien, Stu Jackson, Jeff Van Gundy, Frank Vogel, Jason Kidd, and Nate McMillan, all of which with direct ties to Rick Patino. Let's continue on. With Jeff Van Gundy, we could expand the Patino tree even further as Van Gundy has quite a few notable coaches. Don Chaney, Knicks head coach Tom Thibodeau, and Charlotte coach Steve Clifford all worked under Jeff Van Gundy, putting them inside of that Patino tree. But Jeff Van Gundy doesn't just fall under Rick Patino, as he has also worked under one more legendary Hall of Fame head coach. That would be Pat Riley. Pat Riley as a coach is a five-time NBA champion, three-time coach of the year, and has been listed as one of the top 10 NBA coaches of all time. So who are some of the coaches that worked under the great Pat Riley? That would include the other Van Gundy brother, Stan Van Gundy, and current Heat head coach, Eric Spolstra, along with Dave Wool. Wow, so that was a lot, but that is the Jeff Van Gundy coaching tree, the Pat Riley coaching tree, and the massive Rick Pitino coaching tree. And all of that, everyone that I have just mentioned, stems from Hubie Brown and Larry Costello. So circling all the way back to Larry Brown, he had coached Steven Silas, Avery Johnson, and Del Harris, all of which not having the most notable coaching trees right now. But someone who does is one at Gary St. Jean. Under St. Jean includes Eddie Jordan, Dave Cowens, and Dave Wool. I promise we are really there. Actually, no, we're not even close. This head coaching tree gets so much further. So go, uh, go get a water drink, go take a piss go go take a few shots i'm gonna need a few drinks to get through the rest of this i'll be right back all right we're back so let's continue and we're starting off with mike Schuler, who had also coached under larry brown like brown mike Schuler had to created his own coaching tree and some of the guys who have worked under Schuler include steven silas who as you can tell, is connected to a lot of these trees, but also that includes legendary Blazers and Kings coach Rick Adelman, and one of Adelman's notable assistants include Byron Scott. The assistant coach surrounding Schuler is also Alvin Gentry. As you will learn, he is in an absolute plethora and has worked with so many Hall of Fame coaches. It is insane, actually. We'll talk about him later. Now, between Larry Brown and Don Nelson, there is one more coach that I have yet to mention yet, but you already know who it is. It is Greg Popovich. Popovich is absolutely insane. The amount of coaches that are connected to him 
makes him undisputedly the greatest coach of all time. At the very least, he has influenced probably more coaches than anyone else, unless you're counting someone like Larry Brown or Don Nelson. So one more drink, one more shot, because let's get into the Greg Popovich coaching tree. First off, we have rookie head coach Will Hardy, who is currently leading the Utah Jazz. Next to work under Popovich is Nets head coach Jack Vaughn, who has also served under Steve Nash. Then there is former Celtics coach Ime Udoka, who worked under Popovich and Brad Stevens. Under Udoka and Stevens is the current Celtics head coach, Joe Mazzula. But what makes Greg Popovich and his coaching tree so special is not that he has just fostered so many NBA head coaches, but the guys that he has fostered as head coaches, they have gone on to form their own coaching trees, all of which which tie back to Greg Popovich. So let's get into some of those. PJ Carlismo worked under Pop after being the head coach for a few years, and someone who worked under him is Pacers coach Rick Carlisle. Along with that is longtime Thunder and Wizards coach Scott Brooks. Now Pistons head coach Dwayne Casey was an assistant to Carlisle back in Dallas, and Casey went on to become the Raptors head coach, he was fired, then won coach of the year, and then he was surpassed by 2019 champion head coach Nick Nurse. Some of Pop's other descendants include current Kings coach Michael Brown, and throughout his career, Brown had Lakers coach Darvin Ham and Nuggets coach Michael Malone work for him. Michael Malone has had two notable assistants himself, that being Timberwolves head coach Chris Finch and Wizards head coach Wes Unsell Jr. Former 76ers head coach Brett Brown was a longtime assistant in San Antonio, went on to coach the 76ers, and for a single season had Monty Williams as an assistant coach. Current Suns head coach Monty Williams also worked under Nate McMillan in Portland, and Williams has his own descendants, including Michael Malone and Willie Green of the New Orleans Pelicans. Lastly, the most successful of the Popovich descendants may just be Bucks head coach Mike Budenholzer. As of right now, the Budenholzer tree consists of Taylor J. Jenkins for the Memphis Grizzlies, Darlin Ham, and former Nets head coach and the current Warriors assistant Kenny Atkinson. And remember, all the guys I mentioned were former assistant head coaches to Popovich. This is not including players who played for him, guys like Steve Kerr, Vinny Del Negro, or Monty Williams, all of which were San Antonio Spurs at one point. So anyways, to sum it up, Will Hardy, Jack Vaughn, Joe Mazzula, Rick Carlisle, Dwayne Casey, Nick Nurse, Mike Brown, Darvin Ham, Michael Malone, Chris Chris Finch, Monty Williams, Nate McMillan, Willie Green, Mike Budenholzer, and Taylor Jenkins all have direct ties to Greg Popovich. That is 15 head coaches. 15. Teen of the 30 active head coaches are directly related to Greg Popovich. That is half of the NBA that is involved in the Greg Popovich coaching tree. Do I even have to explain how crazy that is or just the kind of influence that has on the league? Half of the league, half of the league's head coaches have worked for Greg Popovich. Tell me that is not one of the most insane things that you have heard today because that absolutely blows my mind and that is what makes the Greg Popovich tree just so massive and why it takes up so much space half of the freaking league. All right, anyways, let's get back into it. Let's go in a different direction and start with Don Casey. Now, Casey may not have the most prolific head coaching career, coaching for the greater part of a decade at Temple in the 1970s and only a few years in the NBA, but it's who Casey has worked with that makes him notable. First is the great Paul Westhead. Westhead has an extensive coaching career, having coached the NBA, WNBA, and both men's and women's collegiate basketball, with his most famous assistant being the aforementioned Pat Riley. Don Casey, Casey also worked with longtime head coach and two-time coach of the year Gene Shu. Lastly, Casey worked for John Calipari. And yes, you're probably going to be surprised to hear about John Calipari in an NBA video, but before his time in Kentucky, Calipari was a three-year head coach for the New Jersey Nets. And as I mentioned before, Calipari actually worked with Larry Brown at Kansas, and in the NBA, he also had assistants Eddie Jordy and Don Casey work for him. Now, Calipari, of course, has his own collegiate coaching tree, but this is primarily an NBA video, and this thing would just get massive if we talk about the John Calipari coaching tree, but... I just find it really interesting that Calipari was even in the NBA because I definitely didn't know that until the making of it, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who just now learned that. Let's get back to the Larry Brown coaching tree, and one of Brown's assistants include Doug Moe. Moe is a Coach of the Year winner and had one of the greatest coaches of all time work for him, that being George Carl. Carl, like Moe, has won a Coach of the Year award and has amassed a career 1,175 wins, 
sixth of all time. Carl's coaching tree includes Mike Woodson, Scott Brooks, Rick Carlisle, Dwayne Casey, and current Magic coach Jamal Mosley. All right, so I've mentioned Mike Woodson twice now, so let's dive into him just a little bit more. Woodson has worked with both Larry Brown and George Carl, but his coaching tree also consists of Herb Williams and former Knicks head coach David Fisdale, with Fisdale having a current Cavaliers coach J.B. Bickerstaff working for him. Oh, and Herb Williams also worked for Lenny Wilkins. Wilkins has coached the most games in NBA history, and he is also third all-time in wins. Obviously, we can't forget someone as big as that. So far, this is the main coaching tree. Everybody that I have mentioned up until this point is related to Red Arbach, Larry Brown, Greg Popovich, Don Nelson, or Hubie Brown, or of course, all directly tying to James Naismith. But those of you with a keen eye probably know that there were a few major coaches that are still missing, so we're gonna have to do some auxiliary branches. Guys who still tie in, but maybe aren't the most directly connected, but you know, their assistants are tight ends, so they're like step coaches, brothers, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, let's get into some of these other guys who don't necessarily connect, but we still have to talk about. What makes these guys unique is that they actually became NBA head coaches without working as assistants. Even the best head coaches of all time typically were assistant coaches at some point, but some of these guys just never were an assistant coach, make it a little more difficult to find, and typically you only do this if you're a player. Steve Nash, as I mentioned before, he was an example as where he was a player. He was an executive for the Golden State Warriors. A few years ago, was signed by the Brooklyn Nets, and that's how he got there. But anyway, Anyways, let's talk about one of the most prolific coaches in the league today. That would be Warriors head coach Steve Kerr. As I mentioned before, Kerr was a player under Greg Popovich, but I'm trying to avoid those connections when possible. But Kerr's coaching journey started with him becoming a broadcaster after retiring as a player. He worked in the Phoenix Suns front office and became a Warriors head coach in 2014, winning the title as a rookie head coach. I'm sure this isn't a surprise, but Kerr has a relatively short career, but has already amassed an impressive number of titles and career wins. He may not have descendants like Budenholzer or Popovich, but the Kerr coaching tree currently consists of Alvin Gentry, Kenny Atkinson, and Luke Walton, Mike Brown, and Willie Green. Outside of Kerr, there is one more highly recognizable coach who isn't directly connected to the street. That would be 76ers coach Doc Rivers. Rivers had a successful 13-year playing career and a few years after retiring, became the head coach for the Orlando Magic in the early 2000s. Unlike many I've mentioned before, and like Steve Kerr, Rivers was only a head coach and never worked for anyone, therefore not directly connecting to the tree. But Rivers does have a tree worth mentioning. Alvin Gentry was an assistant for him, as well as Aaron Eric Musselman. Possibly Rivers' best former assistant is the Clippers' current head coach, Tyron Lue, with Lou also working for David Blatt. And Lou even has his own assistant who became a head coach. That would be the current Blazers coach, Chauncey Billups. Doc Rivers also gave us a connection to Chuck Daly, as Eric Musselman also has worked for Daly. Daly has a few coaches under him, including Rick Carlisle, Ron Rothstein, Dick Versace, and Billy Cunningham. Going down the line of Billy Cunningham is Matt Guacas, who also worked for Jim Lynham. Lynham also working under Jack Ramsey. So... Mike Budenholzer coaches Giannis Antetokounmpo. Budenholzer worked for Greg Popovich. Popovich worked for Larry Brown. Larry Brown played for Dean Smith. Dean Smith played for Fog Allen, who played for James Naismith. Yes, I just made the connection between Giannis Antetokounmpo and Dr. James Naismith. If that doesn't deserve a subscription and a like, I don't know what does. Go ahead and try it out yourself. Just about any star in the modern NBA or even in the last 30 years of basketball, you could probably tie to this tree and you could probably tie towards James Naismith, which is just one of the craziest facts that I can really ever think about because I don't think you can do this for a lot of other sports. But guess what? We still have more guys to connect because I'm sure you guys know that there are still a few coaches that we haven't mentioned yet. A few, um, you know, notable guys, someone who may have won 11 championships. So let's go tie in a few more prolific NBA coaches. Like I said, for the sake of this video, I can't mention every coach, but go check down below. There's still over 120 coaches and I have already mentioned all 30 NBA coaches. I'm pretty sure, by the way, if not, all 30 coaches are definitely in there. So let's go tie in a few more guys. But I wanted to tie in longtime Timberwolves coach Coach Flip Saunders. Saunders worked under NCAA legend Nolan Richardson at the University of Minnesota. Saunders and Richardson are connected to this tree through Wes Unsell Jr., who worked for Flip in Washington from 2009 to 2011. This is Roy Rubin. 
Rubin is a former collegiate coach, most notable for his time as a coach and athletic director at Long Island University. Rubin was also an NBA coach for a single season where he held a record of 4 and 47. Yeah, that's a 7% win percentage. Now, Rubin may not be the most notable coach in history, but the man who took over his spot, his name is Kevin Lowry. Lowry was a coach for over 20 years, won two championships, and was the coach for a rookie Michael Jordan. Now, Lowry fostered a few NBA coaches. First is former player Wes Unseld Sr., Bill Blair, Dave Wool, but the most famous of which being Phil Jackson. Jackson is an 11-time NBA champion and has been a part of some of the biggest dynasties in basketball history. He is one of the most revolutionary coaches in NBA history and his name is synonymous with the triangle offense. Except. Phil Jackson did not create the triangle offense as that is actually credited to one of his assistants, Tex Winter. And guess what? Tex Winter has his own coaching tree. At Texas State, Cotton Fitzsimmons actually worked under Tex Winter. And one of Fitzsimmons' assistants is current Hawks coach, Nate McMillan. The fact that this is tying in right now, absolutely beautiful. I freaking love this coaching tree. Where were we again? Oh yeah, so anyways, let's get back to Phil Jackson. Now, for as prolific as a coach Jackson was, his coaching tree is less than remarkable. None of his assistant coaches actually went on to have famous head coaching careers, but the only one worth mentioning since he connects us to the rest of the tree is Kurt Rambis. Rambis worked under Phil Jackson, but he also worked for Jeff Hornacek. Hornacek was an assistant to Tyron Corbin, who was an assistant to Jerry Sloan. Sloan's 1,221 wins is good for fourth all time. We could go a step further as Sloan once worked for Frank Layden. Layden was an assistant to Hubie Brown. Oh, and uh, Kurt Rambis, he also worked under Mike D'Antoni. So we have to tie in the legendary Mike D'Antoni, of course. Oh my gods, we're almost finished, but I still haven't talked about Alvin Gentry. And I know you guys are just excited to hear about Alvin Gentry and all the coaches you, that he worked for. Said no one ever. But he has a resume, and I really have to talk about this before we go. Alvin Gentry was actually incredibly difficult to make in this tree because he has worked under so many coaches that I just couldn't keep this thing pretty while tying him into everybody. But Throughout his long career, Alvin Gentry worked under Luke Walton, Steve Kerr, Doc Rivers, Mike D'Antoni, Tim Floyd, Doug Collins, Kevin Lowry, Mike Schuler, and Larry Brown. That's like, what, four Hall of Fame head coaches that this man has worked under for his career? The amount of talent that he has worked under is absolutely insane, especially because he hasn't really been the most notable head coach, but just working with all that talent is kind of crazy. But anyways, that is the NBA head coaching tree. That is connecting 120 NBA head coaches, the top 25 coaches of all time, all 30 current NBA head coaches, and we can tie all of these guys back to just a few head coaching trees. James Naismith, Larry Brown, Bill Russell, Hubie Brown, Rick Pitino, Pat Riley, Don Nelson, Greg Popovich, Doc Rivers, or Phil Jackson. These 10 coaches, just 10 coaches, make up for hundreds of former and current NBA head coaches. Guys, this was an absolutely massive project. This took me at least 20 hours to try and connect to this many coaches and just to try and make sure that we included this many coaches, tying it all into one massive tree. I've seen it done before and I've seen the Naismith connection before, but tell me, Tell me that you've ever heard somebody connect Giannis to James Naismith before. I'll be waiting. So if you are still here, it would mean the world to me if you could like the video, hit the subscribe button to the channel, and go down below and check out the rest of that massive coaching tree. That would mean everything. I am exhausted. I'm going to head out and I'm going to go work on another project. But that is it for this one. And I'm going to catch you guys later.